everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm Steph Lee. I'm the founder of Host Agency Reviews, and you're in for a real treat today with the $100 marketing plan. So this is an actual update for a video we did about four or five years ago that has over 10,000, maybe 15,000 views, but needed a little bit of updating in terms of the images and the information that was in it. So as it turns out, um, it I was hoping to cram it into about 30 or 45 minutes. Um, and I've got a lot of information here for you and it was over that. How do I know that? Because you guys, this is, I just finished recording it only to find out that I didn't record the audio, so here I am doing it again. So hopefully I can get it down this time to the 30 or 45 minutes. So anyhow, I'm Steph Lee again, and this is the site, Host Agency Reviews. I'm a huge fan of online marketing. Um, like all of you guys out there, I'm a small business owner, and I don't have tons of money for marketing. And so I found that online marketing is my favorite medium to work in. Um, to give you an idea, Host Agency Reviews started in 2012. And at the time, of course, we had zero site visitors. Um, if we fast forward five and a half years later, we have... Um, 65,000 visitors a month. So online marketing, we haven't spent any money um, doing any online ads or anything like that. It's all been through organic online marketing. So I'd like to share some of those ideas with you on how I've built host agency reviews so that hopefully you can go ahead and start building your host agency. Ah, not your host agency, your travel agency. All right, so the first thing we have to understand before we go into anything is why do we want to market? And the answer is the phone does not ring by itself. And as a new travel agency, you're going to have a hard time getting people to call you. Um, so online marketing is a great way to reach them. And because here's my joke, wait for it. The phone does not ring by itself and neither does. Please insert ba -dum -boom -ching music. this. Haha. <laughs> All right. So let's get into kind of the strategy with the marketing plan. So um, now we know why we market. So the question is, how do you plan for it? And here's what you're going to do. We're going to come up with a strategy for your marketing plan. Um, those of you that are new agents, your business is pretty slow right now and people aren't, you know, climbing down the door to try to get to you and make some bookings. So look at this time as a great way for you to focus on your marketing plan and your marketing strategy. So follow the steps that we're going to go through here and get your marketing plan set up. Those of you that are experienced agents with a book of business, you know when your slow season is every year. Maybe it's every summer, things are really slow. So every June, Put something on your calendar for two days or three days or however long it's going to take you that you're going to get your marketing plan set up for the following year. And then put a reminder in so that it comes up every year so that you never forget to work on your marketing plan and there's already a time allotted for it. Um, let's see. We all know the saying, you can't be all things to all people. Um, and that's totally true. So the marketing becomes more and more effective as you narrow your focus. Um, and we talk a lot about finding a niche on the site and we've got a great article on finding a niche which will pop up here. So you can click on that if you wanna read more about finding a niche. But one of the biggest reasons for doing it is it makes it easier to find your clients um, and it makes it easier to market to your clients. Now let's dive into the strategy and how to come up with your marketing plan. So the first step is you need to be specific. So focus on your preferreds. Um, maybe you have certain vendors that you really like and you want to push. Um, you want to push your sales towards. Um, maybe there's certain destinations. If you look at your destinations that you've been selling, which ones are making you the most money? Those are probably the ones that it's worth it to start marketing. Um, marketing to your clients, or maybe you have some groups coming up. Um, the, the tricky thing with groups is they need to be planned way far in advance, um, especially if you're planning. Um, a lot of people say, for instance, if you're planning a group, a big school group, um, you want to plan it at least a year in advance so you can get the co-op dollars and other things. And I'll jump on the um, and explain the co-op dollars in just a second. 
Um, with marketing, a consistency is key. So you wanna make sure that you're marketing all year long, but strategically so that um, we're gonna be looking at making a marketing calendar in just a second, but make sure that all year long your clients are hearing from you so you're always top of mind, but also make sure that it's strategic. So let's take a look at this marketing calendar and you can see January through December, we are marketing um, and you guys are able to download this um, marketing calendar template on our site. If you click on the box right here, it will take you to the article um, where you can download the sample marketing calendar template. So anyhow, we're going through this. Um, when I say marketing strategically, so this Disney, um, let's say we're doing a Disney group, a school group in September. Uh, we'll maybe want to start marketing it May, June, and July, because historically that's been when most people are calling in and, and starting to, to chat with us. So we're going to do pizza box flyers because that's strategic. If it's going to be families, a lot of them are going to be ordering pizza from the local pizzeria. And maybe you want to do some direct mail pizza pieces too. So you can see in May and June we're hitting them with that, and then in July we're just doing the direct mail piece. And then down here we have the co-ops. So Carnival January through February is helping us with the email marketing for this Carnival Cruise. We're going to be pushing Carnival Cruise during spring break in April. Um, and what co-op dollars are is it's essentially the vendor. You write them a proposal. So you'll talk to your BDM or with your host agency and you'll say, I want to be promoting Carnival in January or February. I'm going to be sending out um, direct mail pieces or I'm going to be doing these emails and they cost me X amount. I would like you to give me blank amount. Now the thing is, Carnival isn't going to pay for everything for marketing for us. We have to have some skin in the game. So typically they're gonna give us an allotted amount or 50% um, of uh, what we're looking for, or 50% of the cost of the product or the advertisement, depending on what it is. Now the other thing to mention about co-ops is co-op dollars are allotted way ahead of time. So if I'm, um, they're usually allotted by the end of the fourth quarter. So if I'm doing, um, if I was doing this January co-op, I would have to have asked for these um, co-op dollars, you know, maybe in October or November. The earlier you can do it, the better your BDM will tell you when the best time is. But um, typically, like say for instance, this church bazaar, if I wanted to do some co-op dollars with the church bazaar in September, I would have had to have asked for this money way back, at least in December of the year before. So you can see why it's really important to plan ahead. All right, now we're gonna get into the fun stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about seven ideas for under $100 that you can use with online marketing. And then there's a little bit about more traditional um, marketing at the end. But the key thing these all have is they're inexpensive ways for you to get your name out. So the first thing you need to do with online marketing is you need to make sure that if you're going to be utilizing the power of the web, that the web even knows you're there. And how you do that is making sure that you're listed by the search engines. So the big players, you've probably heard of these. Um, I'm guessing you've heard of Google. You've used Google search before. And one to watch is Bing. Bing actually has gained quite a bit of market share, like 10% in the past um maybe even more than 10%, 15% um, in the last five years. So uh, the other one is Yahoo Sites at 12%, um, and then Ask Network and AOL are two very small search engines. But just keep in mind that very small still means you're reaching hundreds or thousands of people. So how do you make sure that you're listed on these search engines? In the interest of time, the best thing for you to do, and because these are constantly changing, the best thing for you to do is simple, simply Google, how do I list myself in Google? How do I list myself on Bing? And what that will do is it will give you instructions on how to make sure that your website is listed by the search engine so that will pull up in the search results, which is our goal. All right, now, when you're listing yourself locally, the key thing to do is some competitive analysis. Um, 
I'm in Minneapolis, I'm based out of Minneapolis, so let's say I type in best travel agent Minneapolis. We can see who pulls up there, and what I mean by who pulls up there is it's going to it's going to show some travel agencies. So say, for instance, Schilling Travel down here pulls up and Minnetonka Travel. But what we're really looking for right now is which directories are pulling up, which places um, like the yellow pages or host agency reviews, places that aggregate a whole bunch of business names. Um, we want to be listed on them. So for us, it's going to depend, it's going to vary locally which these which directories pull up. Um, for us, you can see that Yelp pulls up number one and Thumbtack, which I've honestly never heard of, whoops, for some reason pulls up number three. Angie's List is another great one and Yellow Pages. So these all pull up on the first page of the Google search for best travel agent Minneapolis. Um, and it may not be local search results you're looking for. So if you're an agency that's specializing in African safaris, you're probably not looking for people only in Minneapolis. Um, you want to be looking, your clients, what you want to do is put yourself in the shoes of your clients. If your clients were looking for you online, what would they type in? You're going to type that in and then see which directories pull up. And then you're going to make sure that you go to those directories and list your travel agency. So some tips for when you're doing these profiles on these directories. Number one is to make a complete listing. Um, you can see here that people are more likely to visit businesses that take the effort to do a complete listing. Include photos if you can. A lot of the directories will allow you to upload photos for free. And you can see that you'll get 42% more requests um, for directions on Google Maps. And this is specific for Google, um, your Google profile. You can get more requests for directions um, if you have some images. And then also listing your hours of operations. Now there's, there's the statistics here that show you that you get more um, searchers if you list your hours of operations in the area on the directory that you can list your hours of operations. But the other thing, as many of you are small home-based travel agencies, the hours of operations are important too to set parameters um, so that you know, if you if you put in there that you work 9 to 9 p.m., 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., you may be getting phone calls until 9 p.m. So keep that in mind. You may want to put 9 to 5 or whatever, you know, works for you. If your kids are um, in school, you maybe want to do 8 to 4, 8 to 3. All right, number two, we're moving, we've been talking a lot about online listings. Now, your clients are going to be looking for you and you wanna make sure that you're mobile friendly. Um, so when I say be mobile, it means make sure that your website is mobile friendly. And as I'm saying this, I know that if you have visited host agency reviews, we are not mobile friendly. Um, we are working on it and hope to get um, the new website launched this fall. But you can see here from the statistics that um, Mobile is a lot of people are searching for travel agencies or other services on their mobile devices. So it's important that your site looks nice. So um, when we're looking at this, the shilling travel, these are the mobile results. This is the Google um, lo local listings. And so when I'm talking about local listings, this is kind of what it looks like on a mobile phone. And you probably recognize um, the look of this on the desktop as well, it's, it looks a little bit different, but um, that's what we're talking about when we're talking about a local listing. So some tips for mobile. Uh, when you're looking at a website, whether or not you get it from a third party um, or you build your own or you have someone else build it, make sure that it's mobile friendly or responsive. What I mean by responsive is that it whether you're looking at it on an iPad or a Samsung Galaxy or on your laptop or desktop, it all looks nice. Um, if you're if you're building your own um, or going, make sure that you're looking for a theme that's mobile friendly or responsive. And nowadays, I would say almost all, if not all, themes are mobile friendly and responsive. But 
the important thing to, is to test it out. So once you get your website up and running, um, make sure that you test it out on someone's iPad. And if you have friends with different types of phones, ask them if you can use their phones to look up your website and see how it looks. Because sometimes things can look a little funky. Number three is my favorite, of course, and that's online reviews. As a person that owns a review website, I, I love the power of online reviews. So the important thing for you to remember is don't fear the reviews. There's agencies out there that never want to be listed on any of these review sites because they don't want any negative reviews. The thing I'm going to tell you is eventually in your life, you're going to get a negative review. Not everyone is going to love you and think you're the most amazing thing ever. But um, when you're, <laughs> once you've accepted the fact that you reviews are very powerful and you want your agency to be a part of that, there's some great places to be listed for reviews. Um, Google, Yahoo, and Facebook are three big ones that you want to um, make sure that you're listed on. So for Google, when I showed you that mobile view of shilling travel a little bit earlier, that's um, in the star ratings underneath it. Those are the Google reviews I'm talking about. And Yahoo has something very similar. And Facebook, um, on your business page, you can enable reviews. Now, the tricky thing about reviews is actually getting people to write reviews. So you need to solicit them from your clients. And some ideas for where you can do that or how you can do that is you can put it in your signature line of your email and say, don't forget to give us a review on, and then you can link to wherever you want. Um, you can add the links to the itinerary after the person has booked. So hopefully they've been really satisfied with the whole process. You can put a link or you can put a PS um, and ask them to review you on one of these sites or all of them. Um, and then also on the welcome home note, if you send a handwritten note, you can maybe print up some cards that say, we'd love a review from you on these sites, or on one of these sites, um, and put it in there. Or if it's an email, make sure to put a link that prompts them and make it easy for them. So that means that they should only have to, you know, don't say, make sure to check us out on Google or write us a review on Facebook. And then they have to go to Facebook, find your agency page. Make sure to link right to the agency page. Um, the last one I want to talk about is Yelp. And Yelp is a little bit different than Google, Yahoo, and Facebook. And the reason they're a little bit different is I would say their review filter is a lot more aggressive. Um, you can solicit reviews for Yelp from your clients. Um, it's just some of them may end up in, I'll show you. <laughs> Oops. Some of them may end up in the filtered review. So apparently I had tacos on my mind. Here's El Taco Riendo. And they've got a lot of reviews. They're very active on Yelp, which is great. But we're going to scroll to the bottom. And very hard to see, but... 51 other reviews that are not currently recommended. So these are reviews that have gone into their filter. And oftentimes these reviews are from people, maybe a profile that has been flagged for, um, it's suspicious they may have been paid for their reviews, or they have zero friends and maybe this is their only review. Um, the, the tricky thing about Yelp is it's very difficult to get those reviews in if the people aren't active on Yelp. So as an active Yelper, I can give you a few secrets. Um, the thing you want to do to become successful on Yelp is to find active Yelpers. Now, how you're going to do that is if we look at, again, this El Taco Riendo, you can see that Stephanie K is an elite 17, which means that she's very active. And if you're an elite Yelp member, it means that Yelp has hand selected you as this person that has written a lot of reviews for this area. So if you can find some elite, you want to connect with these elite um, members if possible. And once you connect with these elite members, they naturally write tons of reviews and very great reviews usually for businesses. Um, and then as you grow and have more and more reviews on there, more and more Yelpers will find you. So ways that you can encourage people 
um, that are big Yelpers is you can go to the local community manager. If you live near a large city, there'll be a community manager. You can reach out to them and they have these Yelp elite events. So you could ask to have a booth at one of the events or sponsor something. Um, oftentimes it's with restaurants, um, so it's with food, but you could do something creative and chat with the community manager on it. The other thing to do is to put a Yelp badge on your emails. These little people love us on Yelp are badges you can put on. Otherwise, if you're in a physical storefront location, they have little window stickies that say people love us on Yelp that you can put in the window so that your front of mind, um, Yelp is front of mind when they're coming or leaving your office. All right, we're over halfway there. We got to talk about social media, right? So social media is free and it's wonderful and it's great. The thing is, these different social media platforms, there's tons of them. And some of them are supposed to be the next greatest thing in the three years from now, like Foursquare. What happened to Foursquare? No one really knows, you know? Um, so the key with social media is to choose a few and to do them well. The other thing is, even if you're only going to do a few, make sure that you reserve your social media vanity URLs on all of the different platforms so that that way no one can take um, your URL. Now what I mean by that is so say for instance for our site, Host Agency Reviews, on Facebook, it would be facebook.com backslash host agency reviews. I essentially want to make sure that on all the social media platforms, the backslash host agency reviews belongs to me so that no one else can take it and possibly be posting under my um, agency's name. So if you've got a huge Facebook following or a lot of friends and you think you can convert, convert those over to your business page, maybe you just want to focus on Facebook right now. Uh, make sure to reserve all those other vanity URLs. And then later on, if in a year you want to really dive into Pinterest because you've taken up photography, um, feel free to do that and you know add it. You've already got the URLs. But the key is to do the ones you choose to do well. Don't try to be active on all of them. And we are in the travel industry, so we are very lucky because we have eye candy everywhere. Um, when you're going on fam trips or any type of vacation or work vacation, make sure you're posting a lot of pictures to show people where you're at. You know, people love a you know a great beach pic beach picture or a beautiful mountain vista. Um, and if you everybody's phones nowadays have pretty great capabilities um, in terms of pictures. But if you're looking for something a little bit different and want to improve the quality of the pictures or do something a little bit different, there's um, if you go on Amazon.com and look on smartphone lenses, there's different lenses you can attach to your phone if you wanted to do a fisheye or something a little bit different. So that's something to keep in mind. And the last thing about pictures that is really nice is they take up more real estate in a feed. And you know what I'm talking about when you're going through Facebook and, you know, someone that's just making a comment, my cat ate my dinner. It doesn't take up a lot of room in a feed versus someone that takes a picture um, and posts it. It takes up a lot more room. And that goes for almost any of the different platforms. Twitter, if you upload a picture with your tweet, it takes up more room. Um, Pinterest, if you have a long picture, it takes up a lot more room. Now we're going to jump into email marketing, which some of you may be groaning and thinking, wow, Steph, this is so 2008, which I used to think too, but it turns out email marketing is very, very effective. Um, the, here's the trick about email marketing is all of us start out with zero people on our email marketing list. So it's a little bit disheartening when you send out your first email and it goes to five people. That's how everybody starts. That's how I started. Um, and you know, five and a half years later, we've got 22,000 people on our email marketing list. Um, so the, the, the trick is with email marketing is number one, you need to be consistent. Um, if your clients always expect that every Tuesday they're going to get an email from you, make sure that it happens. So don't overcommit. For instance, for me at Host Agency Reviews, I knew that I didn't like doing newsletters that often and I wanted to write great content. And in order to do that, I couldn't be pushing out and 
you know, four articles a week and sending out a weekly newsletter. So I love astronomy and what I decided to do with something kind of unique and hopefully that sticks in people's minds is to send it out on the full moon every month. So it only goes out monthly so I can still continue to write great content, but it's kind of a memorable thing for it to go out on the full moon and it's called the moon newsletter. If you haven't subscribed, you can go to the site at hostagencyreviews.com backslash newsletter and sign up there. How's that for some online marketing? Um, but that's just an idea. Um, you could do the first Monday of every month. Just make sure it's something that you can do. And then the other thing to help build up your email list is on your, you know, in different places, say for instance, um, I just did a video and I was asking people to sign up for my email list on here. Whenever you do a video for your site or do a webinar for your clients, make sure to ask them to sign up. Make sure to have call to actions, which are um, essentially things saying, sign up for my newsletter on your site. Um, you need to remind people, have something in your email signature. Um, those are all super important. Now, the nice thing about email marketing is you can do some A-B testing on it. Uh, and this is nice because I found with email marketing, when you send it out, you're not getting any interaction with people. Sometimes, very rarely, people will email back. But you know, when you post on Facebook, you get likes and you get comments and you're like, oh, that was a very popular post. But with email marketing, you send it out and you're like, oh, did anyone even read that? So what's kind of neat about it is there's A-B testing and there's different analytics that you can look at. So what I mean by A-B testing um, is you can optimize um, the open rates or the click-through rates and different things. So this is an example on MailChimp, our latest newsletter, um, June 2017. So what we did for A-B testing, which means we're testing different ideas and seeing which one people like the best, um, we decided to try different subject lines. So here's our three subject lines. Um, you can see this is the winner. The winner was this star, F name star, that just means first name. It inserts the person's first name. Steph, we'd like to introduce you to the 2017 hosted agent. And you can see here that its open rate was almost 27%, which is 7% higher than the second um, subject line we tried out. And we tried different things like, oh, should we try, maybe this one was too long, or maybe people didn't like that it had a question mark, who knows? Um, it is kind of fun to guess which one's going to win because I am almost always wrong. But anyhow, so you can see that we chose um, the highest open rate. And what we do is we send it out and we say, we want you to send to the first 50% of our list. So for us, that's 11,000 people. Or um, We want you to send it to this amount of our list and then wait. Uh, we do 16 hours, wait 16 hours, and whichever one has the highest open rate, that's the one we want you to send out. So they sent this out to three equal segments. This one had the highest open rate, number one. So then it sent that out to the remaining subscribers, and here's our analytics on that. So that's kind of what I mean by the analytics behind there and watching that. And speaking of analytics, you guys, Google Analytics is fantastic. Um, if you don't know about Google Analytics, this is something that is amazing. And um, if you're a data lover like me, it will it will make your heart flutter. So, so Google Analytics, um, if you don't have it installed on your site, you'll want to install it right now. And if you're a new agent and haven't gotten your website set up yet, bookmark this because this is super important and kind of, um, I would say this would be a base for being able to do an online marketing effectively. It's just a little snippet of code that you put in the header of your website. And if that sounds like gibberty juke to you and you're like, what is she talking about? You can hire someone to put your Google Analytics on your site. It's really simple. I mean, it should take them five minutes, so it's not going to be expensive. Um, but again, it's something really simple. And even if you're not planning to use the analytics now, or if, even if your agency isn't up and running yet, put the Google Analytics code on your site. And what happens is then if two years from now, you suddenly decide, I'm totally gonna get into online marketing, 
you can look and you'll have two years worth of data on your site, which can help you see the trends and figure out where you want to go with things. Um, the one thing about Google Analytics is ni that's nice is you can use um, campaigns and tracking codes. So what I mean by campaigns is say for that newsletter that we had sent out on the last slide, MailChimp is really nice because it integrates with Google Analytics. So I can say, um, it'll say, what's the name of your campaign? And I'll say July 2017. Um, and so when I go into my Google Analytics, it's automatically tied to that. So I can see how many people came from my newsletter and I can see which pages they visited and I can see how long they stayed. Lots of information on there. Now, so Google Analytics will track everything for you. You can track your visitor count. You can track how long they've been staying on your site, um, who referred people to your site. You can see the sites that get the most visits or the pages that have the highest bounce rates. And what bounce rate is, is it means they come and then they bounce. They just leave right away. So um, if you're a person that loves to analyze data like I do, this is pure heaven. So some ideas for how you can use it on your site is optimize your most popular pages. And what I mean by that is go into Google Analytics and under pages, you'll be able to see um, which ones have the most visitors. And so it makes the most sense if you've only got a little time and you want to optimize your marketing that you find these pages that are the most popular. And maybe you want to make sure that you dig them into the site a little bit. Maybe you want to rewrite the content and make it more colorful. You want to add more resources. You want to add um, links to get them further into the site and deeper into the site. Maybe you want to add a call to action to sign up for your newsletter since it gets so many visits. There's lots of different things you can do, but once you have this data and you know it's the most powerful, it's kind of, you know, the way you can do things is limitless. So um, you can also look at who sends you the most engaged visitors. So on this one, we can see this is um, the Google Analytics of our site. And um, if we look at these, this is the sources where the people have come from. So Facebook is a decent refer for us, but you can see that something that's crazy about Facebook visitors for us is they stay an average of over seven minutes on our site, which is, if you know anything about these analytics, that's kind of crazy. It's, um, you can see it's much higher than everything else. They also have a really, really low bounce rate. So even if I'm posting on Facebook and saying I'm not getting tons of interaction, I can come back here and say it's still worth it for me to post because you can see that even though I'm not getting any interaction or very little interaction, we have people that are very high quality, that are staying a long time, visiting a lot of different pages, and they don't bounce right away. They're very they're a very engaged audience. Um, we can also see that, so Travel Research Online refers a lot of people to the site, and they have, you know, they visit a decent amount of pages, and they stay an astounding almost 10 minutes on the site. For me, I was writing an article at the time for, I was doing a column at Travel Research Online, um, and sometimes it would take me, you know, four hours to write this tiny article is like, oh, is this even worth it? And then I can come to analytics and I can say, yes, it's worth it. And this is why it's worth it. So it's a way to keep you motivated. Now, the other thing you can do is not only optimize your most popular pages, but you can look at those pages with stats below average and figure out how to improve them. So say, for instance, um, you can look up on your Google Analytics um, which pages have the highest bounce rate, which again means they just bounce right away. Um, so which ones have the highest bounce rate on your site? You can go to that page and look at it, and we want them to stay longer, right? We want to lower that bounce rate, and so we can figure out how to link to other articles or resources within our site so that we can lower that bounce rate. Or say, for instance, we go to a page and we they don't stay very long on the site. Um, maybe they're only staying like 30 seconds on that page and it's way below average for our site. So we can go and we can add more content or maybe we want to add a video. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do to try to increase your traffic and engagement on your site. The last thing to mention on this, so I've talked a lot about Google Analytics and I haven't shown you the dashboard just in the interest of time, 
But if you're interested in learning more about Google Analytics, on um, the article on our site, The $100 Marketing Plan, which you can click this link right here, to visit the article. On there, we link to some resources for Google Analytics. There's a Google Analytics Academy that walks you through how to set up Google Analytics and how to understand um, how to use Google Analytics. And the truth of the matter is um, it's infinitely deep on what you can do with it. And I use Google Analytics almost every day, and I probably touch one one hundredth of the possibilities. So you'll kind of, once you get in there, you'll find out what you like and which analytics you like to track, and you'll kind of go from there. Online marketing is fantastic, and it's something I absolutely love and has been very effective to me. But I also want to stress that there is still a lot of power in the more traditional forms of marketing. You know, if you're going to do um, take out an ad or a flyer or radio spots, um, they, they can be very effective. I don't think a lot of us have the budgets for them. So here's some inexpensive ways to do more traditional marketing. Um, that's kind of like a walking advertisement for your agency. All right, so there's some obvious things you can do like joining BNI or some other getting involved in your community. Um, but one thing you may not know about if you're a new agent is you can use your car as an advertisement. So there's different um, vendors that will wrap your car. And this is actually um, my old car. And some warnings to those of you that are not great drivers, it has your phone number on there of your agency. And so, and I just know this from a friend of a friend, you can't drive like a crazy woman because people will call your agency and complain about your driving. That's something to be aware of. Um, so you can get these, they can use co-op dollars to wrap your car and they'll help pay for your lease. Um, and you can talk to, again, your host agency or your BDM about this. Um, I think, I think um, Palace Resorts also does this and um, there's a couple other resort change. So um, if you don't want something so flamboyant, you could also do like just a magnet you stick on the side of your car with your in agency information or you could have someone uh, do graphics with your agency name and your phone number on one of the windows. The other nice thing about that is you can write off your car payments if that's something you do. Um, and then there's the more traditional t-shirts and name tags. So in here's a picture of um, Jeremy from Amphibia Travel. And what he does is he has these t-shirts printed off and he'll send them to clients every now and again and then ask them when they're on their vacation to take a picture with Amphibia Travel. Um, that's pretty cool because they usually post it up on his Facebook page. But the other nice thing is then you have a client that's essentially a walking advertisement for you. And of course, you can wear these as well along with a name tag. Um, and when you're going out and about, I've heard stories about um, agents that have been in line at grocery stores or wherever, the bank, and someone has come up to them and said, hey, I'm looking for, it just so happens I'm looking for a trip to Mexico. Like, can I get your business card? And bam, number three, business cards. Um, make sure to take the time to get a business card. And I'm not talking about those free Vista print business cards. Um, this is my personal opinion, but business cards are kind of an extension of your company. And it's what you leave your client with, the impression you leave them with. So you want to have a really nice business card. Um, if you choose to order your business cards online, make sure you spend the extra $30 and get a really nice um, quality business card. Other options for when we're talking about t-shirts or business cards or your name tags, instead of ordering them online, something that's really nice to do is to order them within your community. If there's a t-shirt store or a print shop, um, there are also small business owners that we wanna support. And with business cards specifically, it's really nice to get a, there's different paperweights. Uh, if you've ever gotten a business card and some of them are really flimsy and some of them are shiny, some of them are matte. There's all sorts of different things you can do with it. 
it's nice to be able to go into the print shop and to feel the different weights of the paper and see different examples um, of the shininess. How, what does the mat exactly look like? What are the different levels of um, shine that you can have on it? So just some things to keep in mind there. Oh, and you guys, this is it. This is the end. Um, thank you so much for sticking with me. And if you have um, questions or a comment, if you've liked the uh, webinar, please feel free to leave a comment in the YouTube um, comment section. You know, we love engagement. And this is about online marketing. So did you see again my call to action there? Uh, you can also find us on social media. We're at, um, on Facebook or YouTube at Host Agency Reviews. Otherwise, um, my personal URL is I am Steph Lee with an L-Y. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook as well with that URL. So, um, and lastly, if you haven't signed up for our monthly moon newsletter, make sure you do so. Again, it's at hostagencyreviews.com backslash newsletter. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thanks so much.